Hey guys, I'm Ezra and in this Lord of the Rings Rise of War video I'm going to show you a guide about Camor. And without further ado, let's get going. So, this commander from his typing is a strategist, which I believe is a pity. It doesn't really fit to his uh, skill sets. This title is increasing his focus stat, also giving him plus 2 skill points and then increases his focus poison and burn damage by 10%. Now, this increases his elemental damage, but I don't think that this is the ideal typing for him. Camus himself isn't really doing great elemental damage. Like, compare this to Sauron's elemental damage output, or let's say to there's one more commander who was really good in focus damage being Kestaro. So, there is a world difference in elemental damage if we compare those two commanders. Those commanders, they just outperform Camus if it comes to elemental damage. And then, if we take a further look into his skill set, like let's jump over to his skills, then you will see that he doesn't really have enough active skills to deal good amount of elemental damage. The only active skills he has is poison damage over here, then shadow of the east, and then dreadful presence. All right, then he also has a bit of uh, Damage over time, elemental damage being Nazgul Screech. There's two skills with focus, but only two skills that scale with focus being Dreadful Presence and Nazgul Screech. And the rest, like Shadow of the East, Poison Damage, Morgul Poison, it's just not scaling with focus. So why should we want that type strategist? It's not enough. This isn't what he specializes in, which is why I believe that the leader typing would have been much better for Camus. He is a troop boosting commander. Anyway, so let's skip this. Let's move over to his attributes. You see that his highest stat is his focus stat, which I think is a waste. You shouldn't focus on focus. I have already explained why. Instead, I would recommend spending all you have into his might stat. Try to increase this as much as you can with plus attack. And then you see that the speed stat is also overall kind of nice. He is outspeeding anything important in the battlefield. But yeah, you see, you want to have as much might as possible. And then gear-wise, I am equipping these items right now. It's a cutlass with melee might, a superior hauberk with melee vigor. You may want to change this with a quilted armor and focus protection whenever you are up against something focus heavy. Then a helmet, cask of pride with fortitude of soldiers and a palantir of orphan because of the pursuit. This is very important, but we will come to that later. The alchemist bomb build looks pretty much like this. Now let, let's quickly move over all the skills and explain why this is good. Second in command is just boosting your melee damage. Not by quite a lot, but still it is something. In comparison to other troop boosting commanders, this isn't anything special, but we take what we can get. Then you have Discipline. This is going to increase your defense stat, which is kind of nice. That way you mitigate more physical damage. It's not a lot, but at least it is something. And against good side, they do specialize in dealing physical damage a lot. So we take it. 7 out of 7. Then Anticipation. You would definitely want to max this out because of the evading stacks. And this is going to protect your unit with the lowest defense stat with a 75% chance to evade for the next 4 attacks. I like this because this is protecting your alchemists. And in order to have this activated at all times for your alchemists, you need to make sure that your alchemists stay the only unit with the lowest defense stat in your army. But we will come to that in the group composition. To the top we have Shadow of the East as his title. This is just elemental damage every other round. Amul targets one unit and then deals focus damage against it. Once you have maxed it out, you start to prioritize enemies with the highest defense. Now this is a double-edged sword. By maxing this out, you are kind of forcing Kamul to always go against the unit with the highest defense. But the unit with the highest defense isn't the priority target because they don't deal the biggest chunk of damage in the enemy army. The enemy army's biggest damage dealers are usually the ranged units which have low defense stat. So maybe because of that very reason you may don't want to put all of your points into it, just 14 is enough. That way Kamul still has a chance to attack the weak 
backliners. Then he has this skill over here, Dreadful Presence, one of his elemental damage skills. It activates every three rounds. It targets three units. It's a bit of focus damage. The good thing about this is it is scaling with focus and also it has a side effect. Whenever the three units have been attacked, the next round's damage is going to be minimized. And this alone is enough reason to put at least one point into it. To have basically damage mitigation because you minimize the incoming damage. Then to the top, we have poison damage. It's only going to activate on round one because it has rush and then you apply a damage over time effect that's going to be active for the rest of the fight. It is kind of okay just putting one point into this to have this damage over time effect, you know, because every bit counts. But I wouldn't really max this out because there is always the danger of the enemy army having decoy units and having like seven out of seven points spent into this just to have it soaked by a decoy is just seven points wasted. Then Ring Wraith, now this is a crucial title for him. You want to maximize your elemental damage for your alchemist, so you definitely need to max it out. And then you have your fire damage, burn and poison damage increased by 30%. And these debuffs are actually three debuffs in one title. You have one debuff being burn, one debuff being poison, one debuff being focus damage. Just by putting one point into this, you already have three debuffs. And if the enemy wants to cleanse this, it's going to be hard because it's going to select the buffs randomly. But you definitely want to protect these buffs as good as possible. The most important debuff is the burn debuff for your alchemist and Corsairs. And then to the top we have Morgul Poison. It is enough to just put one point into this because whenever Kamul attacks with normal attacks you apply a poison debuff that lasts for two rounds and it can stack two times. We don't put points into this because of the damage output. One point is enough to have it as another debuff. Another debuff to protect your burn debuff from being dispelled. So this is why one point into Morgul Poison is important. And then you can just put seven points into Nazgul Screech. This is going to stun two enemy targets in round one. It also gives you a bit of focus damage that is chunking away a bit of HP every round. Like this is a damage over time effect as well and it scales with focus. This is also nice to counter Convener. Convener is a bursty ability. If the units are stunned, they can't Convener. And last but not least, whatever leftover points you have, you definitely want to spend into the Black Easterling. Here is the reason why. Every other round, you are going to target two enemy units, reduce their defense and speed stat by a certain number, but also increase the defense and speed stat of your units, two units, by a certain number as well, for one round. This is important because alchemists and mountain trolls aren't really fast but with this you give them at least a chance to outspeed important enemy damage dealers before they get to act if you attack first you chunk away some of their big dps and that way when they attack you lose less units so i would definitely spend whatever leftover points i have into the black easterling to give my mountain trolls and alchemists a bit of more chance of surviving and there you go this is his alchemist build and i have to thank shilki for helping me figuring out how to get the best out of kamul so shilki thanks to you let's also summarize his strengths and weaknesses and this is going to be a fast one because kamul doesn't really have a lot of strengths he has two strengths in total the first one being Obviously, he has strong elemental damage, but not strong enough to compare with the Witch King, Kestaro or Sauron. It's maybe mediocre elemental damage. And then his last strength is that he has the first round stun being his Nazgul Screech. This can help to prevent the burst damage of Convener. Let's move over to his weaknesses and let me tell you, he has a lot. Let's start with the first one being the very obvious weakness against 
elemental damage. This commander can be countered by any chest piece that is giving protection against elemental damage. It could be resistance, it could be focus protection, it could be fire protection, but alchemist bomb build is weak against fire protection and the skill I alert. Second weakness, well that's also an obvious one, being evade. He has nothing that provides pursuit, his units can't connect if he is fighting let's say a Gilgalad or a Grimar. They have strong evading mechanics and he's going to suffer a lot. His next weakness is against debuffs such as Champion of the Light or Starlight. Those debuffs specialize in killing Orcs, Urukai and Trolls. And guess what? You have lots of Trolls and Alchemists who are Urukai in your army comp and that is a danger. His fourth weakness would be Crowd Control. To be more specific, Army Madness because he is running a 3 unit army composition and then Army Stun. Why? Well, you can't deal damage when your units are sitting in stun. That is also an obvious one. His fifth weakness is High Commander Damage. Troop boosting commanders in general suffer against glass cannons and Kamul isn't an exception. And last but not least, he is weak against elemental damage. Mountain trolls may have high defense stat, but that can be bypassed with elemental damage. And he has nothing that protects him from elemental damage. And there you go. These are Kamul's strengths and weaknesses. Let's have a look into his purple gear and see what makes sense. So. Here are the items I consider best in slot and it is very straightforward. Cutlass because of lots of might and plus attack, also the special effect melee might. Your alchemists are your main source, they are infantry units, you get 100 units per command. The same goes for corsairs, which is why cutlass will benefit you a lot. Plus attack is always nice for infantry units. As your chess pieces you have two choices. To the left you have the superior hauberk, lots of might, defense for your army and also melee vigor. You have nothing but melee units so this is perfect. Sometimes you just want to equip a quilted armor because of the focus protection. Whenever you are up against Gandalf the White, Eladriel, the king of the death with oath breakers and so on. You get the point whenever you are fighting heavy focus damage. Then his helmets, we have two here. To the left the brutal helmet. This is a universal good approach. Lots of might plus HP. Your Corsairs and Alchemists will thank you for that and also damage mitigation for your melee units comparable to the Horberg special effect. It adds up, like those effects just add up. But sometimes whenever you are up against some commanders with strong madness mechanics like let's say Sauron, Isildur with ring bearer or let's say against Grimar or mouth of sauron you just need to equip a resolve to not be victim against your own alchemist bomb and then as your accessory there isn't a lot to choose from realms of moria decent stats overall plus 12 might and plus 3 attack for your melee units this is what you need and then you have haste of soldiers as a special effect i kind of like this because mountain trolls are making your army slow and they aren't really the first units to hit in combat but with this you at least lift the burden on the first attack and also this is kind of working together with your respect 5 titles effect which increases also the speed stat of your units if you don't want to run haste of soldiers there is also bane of dwarfs the more offensive version which is also viable. Let's have a look into his golden gear and you don't have a lot to choose from. So as a weapon you definitely want to have the reckoning, lots of might and plus attack and then might of soldiers. That is an easy one. If it comes to his chest piece you have a few options. For example when you run mountain trolls I think the massive breastplate is your go-to. It's giving lots of might, lots of defense in general and also boost your largest unit with additional defense, then I would go with Resilience of Giants to protect my Mountain Giants. But there is also one more special effect that this item can have, which is called Significant Protection. And what that effect does is it's giving your unit with the lowest defense additional defense stats. Max Refined, it's giving you plus 30 defense. If you're running him with Alchemists, plus 30 defense for your Alchemists. They are your weakest unit in your army. That way you can keep them protected. But I'm not quite sure which one is better. Resilience of Giants to keep your mountain trolls safe 
so that way they can protect your units better or just go straight to plus defenses for your alchemists. But what do you guys think? I mean, Krakenish level people who have experience with the massive breastplate and significant protection, what do you think is better for Camus? Resilience of giants or significant protection for your alchemists? Let me know in the comments. If you don't use your Camus with mountain giants, then you can always use the Warbone battle plate. But generally speaking, even if you are using mountain controls you can always make use of a warborn battle plate with fortitude of soldiers but if you have mountain trolls maybe massive breastplate is a bit better and then let's have a look at his head pieces we have two options over here cask of pride being the more general approach like this is covering everything quite nice lots of might and defense for your melee units followed up by giving you damage mitigation with fortitude of soldiers that's just so nice if you need to counter a cc like army madness or army Star the cask of submerged isle with ages is the number one choice and if i had to choose between these two helmets i would go with ages there is just a lot of cc running around in the competitive pvp niche you can't make do without this helmet you just need ages and having a look at his accessories nowadays every second commander i encounter is a gil Galat. just knowing that he is there is pushing a lot of pressure on me so it forces me to always equip a palantir of orphank because of tactical mark you just need it sometimes you also need it to counter prudence like grima has in case you don't need to be afraid of gil Galat or grima for some reason you can equip the drums of Barad Dua with Might of Soldiers. It has also another viable special effect called Iron Guard. That special effect is healing your melee units on each round. That too is kinda nice. If you ask me, I have found myself in a situation where I just can't unequip the penalty of Orphan, just to be sure against Evade. That leads me to his respect 10 item. Is it worth investing into it if you ask me it's not and here is why the build i have shown to you revolves around urukai's mountain trolls and corsairs the plus attack and plus hp from this weapon would only benefit the corsairs that just isn't good enough and i haven't found an army composition for kamul that revolves around evil men only and gives good results so that is the first reason like i have tried this army composition with albadiers and corsairs those units are infantry units you get 100 units per command and that is something that benefits the most of plus attack and plus hp so this is the only combination that i came up with and i am in tactics evolve right now if you see these this golden frame this is indicating tactics evolved additional special effects it didn't work out but i am not using the respect 10 item but still let me show you what happens when you use this army composition so here i am fighting a uh, haldir me being respect level 5 or 7 or so and haldir himself also having lots of respect he has this gear one of the strongest ranged composition a range composition can have in tactics evolve versus hunters with dual blows and then rangers of the north with haven which is kind of interesting because he has no regular healing for this unit to get the max value out of haven he only has escort but this is active every other round and it targets a unit on a random basis so you can't ensure that haven is active on each round so this is maybe even a mismatch for this fight and then sentinels with dispersion this is the outcome we have kamul with the gear i have shown to you at the start of this video with albedis and eradicate fully maxed out dragoons with rupture all right against this army comp i should have used the special effect that is giving you damage mitigation against ranged units that would make more sense and then a big chunk of my corsairs with follow-up follow-up being a very strong mechanic but even then it wasn't good enough to make kamul work and i don't believe that by changing this item with his respect 10 item fully maxed out max refined that you can change the outcome of this fight and i believe you will have lots of outcomes like this even with his respect 10 item and all of that makes me believe that his respect 10 item isn't really working for kamul he isn't good enough maybe this is the reason why you don't see a lot of kamuls with his respect 10 item walking around in later seasons and if you look at the special effect what does it do dark ways kamul normal attacks in 
increase might and focus by a certain point. Stacks with each attack. I mean, so what? Even if you increase the might and focus stat while the combat is lasting, this doesn't mean a thing for Kamul. The damage of your units gets decided in the pre-battle phase. Even if you were to increase the might and focus stat later within the fight, that doesn't mean that this is increasing the damage of your units. Only the focus stat would be increasing your focus damage dealing abilities which scale with focus, but that's it. This isn't good enough. There needs to be a rework for Kamul. But this is just my opinion. I am eager to know what you guys think about this respect 10 item. Maybe we have some people in our community who have a Krakenish level Kamul who already figured out how this works. I couldn't find a way and neither could my people in my community. What do you guys know about Kamul? Let me know in the comments. All right, let's also follow up with the troop composition for Kamul that makes the most sense and you are seeing it right in front of you. So you always want to have at least 20% mountain trolls. And I'm saying around because you can adjust this number. So right now, me being level 49, I have 60 mountain trolls. And it depends, like sometimes I really want to have more mountain trolls. To decide what is the correct ratio for your mountain trolls, you just have to take fights. And whenever your mountain trolls get completely wiped out in a fight, that is a signal to you that you are using not enough mountain trolls. So if my mountain trolls get wiped out, I may increase this number. So in this case, I would lower the number of my alchemists, have a bit more uh, mountain trolls over here, or even less, and then get this number up all the way to 72 or so. But I wouldn't go lower as this. I always want to have at least 50% or around 50% of my army consisting of alchemists. And then a bit of Corsairs, just because these two damage dealing units deal fire damage, so they synergize with each other. And also Corsairs don't have higher defense stat than alchemists. Why is it important to have your alchemist being the unit with the lowest defense? Because of Kamul's skill anticipation, which is giving your unit with the lowest defense four stacks of evading the next four attack by 75%. So this troop composition works exceptionally fine because of the synergy. And in Tactics Evolved, I also have, you know, the follow-up for Corsairs. And that's it. This is the troop composition. Let's check out some battle reports. And in this fight, we are up against uh, Haldir. And this is also among the reasons why I don't like to play Kamul at all. He may be viable in the first two seasons where not everybody is up to speed, but in the later seasons, people start to figure out how this game works. And that's when Kamul starts to get bad. You just can't play him competitively. Haldir is just destroying us. We have Mountain Trolls with Staggering Blow. This is Tactics Evolved. Alchemist with Significant Assault. Whenever our Mountain Trolls stun or whenever Kamul is stunning with Nazgul Screech, we get additional damage for our Alchemists. And then Corsairs with follow-up, of course. Aldir has this gear. Merc with Bow with Ranged Might. Hunter Skin with Ranged Vigor. Rapper Suit with Hysteria. And then Harp of Lothlorien with Sustain. And look what is happening. He has Sentinels with Dispersion. And then Vosus Hunters with the follow-up, of course. Very strong in Tactics Evolved. And then Rangers of the North with Haven. And in this case, this makes totally sense because he provides the healing effect with Harp of Lothlorien. So, a very strong Haldir. In the snapshot page, we see we have done only 120k damage versus almost 270k damage. He has totally destroyed us. In this fight, we are up against the Dwalin. And in this case, I have changed my Corsairs with Oathbreakers just out of curiosity, just to see what's going on. But this time, the anticipation skill of Amul is protecting Oathbreakers because they have the lowest defense in this army composition. And I have Cool-Headed Enforcement as a special effect because of my first round stun and my Mountain Trolls. So whenever they go first, they have a chance to increase the damage my alchemist can deal against them. But my alchemists aren't protected because of the higher defense stat. So Oathbreakers are safe in this case. This is the outcome we have achieved, like Dwalin, 
he doesn't have anything that is protecting him from my fire or focus damage. He has Hammer of Moria with lethal weapon, Durance Blade with dominance, and then Cask of Pride with melee suppression, and Wolf's Pride with Arid Luin formation. A high respect level Dwalin, but he didn't max out Warrior of Lonely Mountain, which is why my alchemist can deal a lot of damage against him. His units have these special effects, well marksman because he wants to use them as a decoy, if he had maxed it out it would have been a 100% chance, and then sentinels with dispersion, swiftness as a decoy effect, and then guardians not being maxed out at all. So there is room for improvement, but still as long as he don't max us out his respect 5 title, you can achieve a victory like this. Which is why I said his strength is elemental damage. If the enemy isn't covering elemental damage, you can get some value out of your Camus. In the snapshot page we have done 300, almost 30k damage versus 130k damage. And this is the detailed view. Alchemists have done a lot of damage as you see. Followed by Oathbreakers. In this fight we are up against one of Gandalf's strongest army compositions against us. So let's check out his gear. He has a cover with Smite, then a scale made with melee vigor, trapper sword with hysteria, and a smoking pipe with sustain. A pretty much meta built Gandalf. And wow, look what is hurting us. He has Champion of the Light. This is getting rid of our mountain trolls and alchemists. In addition to that, High Alert is mitigating our elemental damage. And this alone is so strong that he is a hardcore counter. But not just only that, he has a very dangerous army composition against us. Guardians can soak a lot of fire damage because of heatproof skin, 20% reduced burn damage. Now this adds up with High Alert, so they have minus 70% burn damage received. That's a strong tanky unit. He also has Range of the North, tanking some damage. Overall, because of Protector of North and Scouting Tactics, on top of that Haven, Gandalf has enough healing to get the stacks with Haven up. Because of the Smoking Pipe with Sustain, also is the Grey effect that has a chance to proc. And then he has lots of burst damage because of Spirits of the Wood. They deal lots of elemental damage, focus damage to be more specific. Primordial Force is providing that. In combination with Convena, that's a lot of damage. And the Mountain Trolls can't survive that burst damage. It's just cutting right through the thick defense stat of the Mountain Troll. In this case, we just needed a focus protection armor, but we have a superior Hauberk with melee vigor. That's not helping at all. This is the outcome. Let's check out the snapshot page. We have done not even 40k damage versus almost 270k damage. In a detailed view, you see everything got wiped out. Nothing had enough time to deal damage. Here we are fighting a Theoden. And let's check out our gear. We have a superior Hauberk with melee vigor. All right, this makes sense against Theoden. And let's see what Theoden has. He has a Reach of the Riddermark with Batter. He has a Scout's Mate with Deafness. He has a Horseman's Helm with Resolve and a Flame with Man. Looking at this build, I can see that he maxed out everything important, like his Respect 5 title, Chaotic Retreat and Mount Combat, and also Rohirrim. All right, as long as he has that, that is good. And yeah, his units have these special effects, Bow Knights with Light Armor. This Persian would have been the better choice. Cataphracts with Blessed Armor, and then Cavaliers with Rise Up. All right, so let's see. Kamul's strong elemental damage cut through the defensive stat of his units. Like Theoden is very vulnerable against elemental damage, and we just abused that weakness. Let's check out the snapshot page. We have done almost 400k damage versus around 110k damage. Let's check out the snapshot page. Alchemists have done a lot of damage because they were protected by Mount Trolls and also the anticipation skill protected them. Theoden has no pursuit which is kind of nice. We can make the anticipation work early on. I have two more battle reports to share with you. This one is about Gandalf the Grey. 
So let's check out what we have done. So we have a superior Hobbock with melee vigor. Unfortunately, that's not as great as the quilted armor and focus protection against Gandalf the White. But yeah, we can't always cover every situation. You need to use clairvoyance. I didn't do it. I just took the risk and took the hit. Gan of the White has this gear, very Krakenish level gear as you see, Glam Ring, three times refined, and then Blade of the Zitatel with Fortitude of Man, Swan Helm with Fortitude of Man as well, Fine Smoking Pipe with Heroism. And you see this is a very strong Gan of the White with lots of respect. He has the White which is providing the biggest chunk of his focus damage in combination with Glam Ring special effect. That's a dangerous combination. His units have these special effects. Divide and Conquer for his guards of the tower, Cataphracts with Armor Break, and then Dunedines with Parry. So this Gan of the White player is definitely top notch. He knows what he is doing. In the snapshot page we have done almost 180k damage versus 200k-ish damage. And in the detailed view, our alchemists tried what they could, but it wasn't enough. Let this be my last report, and in this time I have included Oathbreakers instead of Corsairs once more. Let's check out why, what I have done here. In this case, I have equipped the Horbeck with melee vigor. I can't complain about that. That is okay against Gil Galad, but I don't have a Palantir of Orphank with Tactical Mark in this case. And this is going to hurt me a lot. The Evade of Gilgalad is quite strong. Gilgalad has this gear, Elven White Knife with Might of Elves, Quilted Armor with Focus Protection, Pepper's Hood with Hysteria, and Smoking Pipe with Second Wind. And the build is just the pretty much meta build. I can't complain about that. If he wanted, he could have maxed out his... Um, high alert even more but there is no need for it because he has evade if i had tactical mark that's where he can think about maxing out high alert like he doesn't even have a third t3 unit instead he is rocking marksman and then sentinels with dispersion with heralds and light armor so you see evade is one of his biggest weaknesses and you need to have pursuit or else you will end up like me in the snapshot page we have done only 60k damage versus 200k ish damage but yeah guys this is Kamur. if you ask me he desperately needs a rework game devs please show him some love he needs it please rework him and that's it for this guide if you enjoyed this one just as always please let me know by leaving a like or dislike the video, that way you let me know that I need to do better with my guides. If you want to support me, share the video, let other people know, and maybe like the video, that is the best way to support me for free. I see you guys next time.